Welcome into Wager Talk TV. I'm Drew Martin, joined by Matt Josephs and Rob Vino of Sports Memo and WagerTalk.com. We're talking the West region here, guys, in the NCAA tournament. Round one, we got Virginia and Ohio squaring off here in the 413 matchup. We're seeing Virginia now minus seven, minus seven and a half point favorites here, Matt. Huge move. I believe the biggest move in the round one games, 131 being the total. You're there in the state of Virginia. A lot of news coming out of the camp. What are you What are you thinking here with Virginia versus Ohio, both side and total? So I, I just spoke to someone who covers the, the Virginia team. Um, and so basically what the deal is, one player is supposedly has COVID. Uh, we don't know who. We don't know if he's a big player. We don't know if he's a small player. Three or four scholarship players are not in quarantine, and the walk-ons are not in quarantine. So the rest of the guys are in quarantine right now. The hope is that they're going to have a practice on Thursday night of some sort, uh, and then they're going to fly to Indianapolis on Friday. Now they have to have a bunch of negative tests and things like that, so that comes into play certainly. But then when they get out there Friday, in terms of a, they could potentially only have a shoot-around or one practice out there, so there's a chance that at most they could have two practices. Most likely they're only going to have one practice before they play an Ohio team. That's really good. And, of course, we've seen the line move in this market, and we've already seen a lot of people jumping on Ohio. It opened at 10.5. It's down to 7.5, and, and for good reason in terms of Jason Preston's really good. Top 10 in assist rate uh, for the Ohio Bobcats. You look at Dwight Wilson, top 15 in effective field goal percentage. Uh, ben Vanderplas is really good. Ben Roderick. There's a bunch of guys on this Ohio team. And they're really efficient on offense. The questions come up on defense, where the Bobcats have struggled at times in uh, the interior and things like that. And then also, does this line continue to fall? And is there almost a buyback point? This is still Virginia. This is still technically the uh, defending national champions. Now, we won't know until most likely closer to tip off who that one player is and even if he's going to be available here. But to me, Jay Huff, if he's not the guy, should be able to eat. He's seven foot one. He's going to sky over all the Bobcats. So if you do any sort of DFS here, I would certainly include Jay Huff in there. I think he's going to be that guy for the Cavaliers that they're going to focus on. They're going to throw it to him inside. He's going to pass out. He's going to get some assists, some rebounds, some points here. So I, I think that I'm not going to buy into the Cavaliers until we get an idea here of how their travel and their practice is going to be. But if it gets to a certain point, I may look to them if we start getting more information as to who may or may not be available. Well, Robbie, it's, it doesn't sound good out of the Virginia camp here. I mean, what Matt just saying, possibly just one shoot around here before uh, before this game tips off. But uh, we're seeing Virginia now minus seven, minus seven and a half in the marketplace as we're filming right now, 131 being the total ACC Mac. Facing off here, 413 in the West region. What are you thinking, Robbie? Well, certainly one team has padded your wallet a lot more lately than the other one has. Ohio, you 8-1 and one against the spread last nine games. UVA, 1-5 against the spread. And UVA on the season, guys, 2-7 and seven when laying 8 or more. Now, obviously, I put these notes together before the line fell underneath 8. But still, you get the picture when they're in a mid-range to or a higher mid-range to upper range. Not that good at covering the number. Um, UVA, unlike past Virginia teams, 5-1 and one over the total in their last six games. Some shooters, a little bit worse three-point defense. Um, a couple of things here fundamentally, Drew, that might attract you to either over or Ohio U, depending upon how you think. Matt talks some of the names on the Ohio U Bobcats, and the guys that he mentioned, Preston, Roderick and Vanderplas. These are good three-point shooters. They can stretch a defense. Now, Virginia, we know, is famous for that pack line defense. Does you no know good to make a picket fence across the paint if guys are shooting bombs from beyond the three-point arc? And as I mentioned, when you look at Virginia's defensive three-point numbers this year, they're not up to speed with what we know Virginia to be on the defensive end of the floor. So maybe Ohio can stretch them out. Second thing we note here is the contrast in tempo. This is probably the most extreme contrast in tempo that we're going to see in the first round. Um, Ohio U, 13 of their last 14 games have been played at 70 possessions or better. Virginia Cavaliers, they rank dead last in Ken Palm adjusted tempo in the country, number 357. So you got a really snail's pace against a team that wants to go. I would say this, the fact that Virginia is not even going to hit the floor till possibly Thursday. I would expect Ohio U to come out and pressure Virginia. Uh, there could be um, game fatigue here for the Virginia Cavaliers. They're going to want to slow it down, but Ohio U is going to want to raise tempo. 
see if Virginia can handle 40 minutes of basketball from a conditioning perspective. And we'll find out from there. I think, though, that, you know, if Ohio gets going early, remember in that MAC tournament, Ohio U hit that first game off of their own 13 day COVID pause. And they rolled right through that thing. Every first half was a destruction. Every game turned out to be a pretty big win. I know one of the finals looked a little closer than it really was, but Ohio U played tremendous coming off COVID pause. So I understand the line move. As Matt says, there could be a breaking point, a tipping point where it gets so low. Remember, the public hasn't even gotten involved in these games yet, and they're known to be followers. So you may expect some more Ohio U money. If you like them, you probably want to get them now um, rather than later. We'll see how the line movement goes. But I do think that. Um, the fundamentals in this game are important to watch. I agree with you, Robbie. I, I mean, in terms of like picking a bottom of how low this number gets, unless we get differing information out there from Virginia's camp, I, I, I don't see like necessarily a buyback number where this is going to happen just because the COVID, the COVID uh, pause fade, fading the team that's off of COVID. It, it has been such a money bet this season that um, I, I just don't see this number going higher for Virginia unless there's news that uh, players are going to come out. But great information from both Robbie Vino and Matt Joseph. Check, check Matt out at sportsmemo.com. Check Robbie out at wagertalk.com. And guys, you can use the coupon code MM50 at checkout. That's MM50, and it takes $50 off any March Madness package there. So check it out, wagertalk and sportsmemo.com.